During the muscle car era, Ford produced a ton of muscle car small blocks. Today we're going to take a look at two, my most favorite and my least favorite. Let's check them out. As I promised in the intro, today we're going to take a look at two different motors, my favorite and my least favorite. Starting with the favorite. Now in 1971, a lot of the manufacturers had already started lowering the compression on their combinations. Everyone thought the muscle car era is over. Everyone except for Ford. Actually, 1971 was the high watermark for Ford performance. You see, in 71, they combined the Boss name with the 351 Cleveland, giving us a Boss 351. And in 1971, despite the fact that everyone was lowering the compression, that Boss 351 had 11 to 1 compression in 1971. And it turns out, it's the most powerful small block I've ever tested. That's one of the reasons I wanted to test, build, and test all of these combinations. You see, you can't test other guys, you can't test acceleration runs from back in the day, because you never know what you got. I wanted to find out what they all do tested under the same conditions. So I went to great effort <laughs> to test all of these small blocks. And I can tell you this, until I test something else that makes more power, and I've tested a ton of Chevys and a ton of Fords, that 1971 Boss 351 makes the most power of any factory small block I've ever tested. The only one I think that might have a chance is the 340 six pack offered by Dodge. Now I've seen some other tests, but those are modified versions. So until I test a stock one, are you listening, Steve Dulcich? Until I test a stock one, right now, Boss 351, high water mark for all the muscle car small blocks. Now let's check out the motor that I really don't like. If the Boss 351 is my favorite, what is my least favorite? Oddly enough, it's a Hypo 289. That's right, you guys let me know. Tell me all the stories you have about the super cool, super fast, high revving Hypo 289 you ran. I wanna hear about it, because maybe I'm not giving it a fair shake, but I can tell you this, I was an owner. I had a really cool 1965 four speed, four series gear, Mustang GT with a Hypo 289. It even had the Shelby upgrades. It had the tri-wide headers. It had the aluminum intake. It had a Holley four barrel. And guess what? At the same time, I also had a then new 1988 five liter, five speed LX Mustang. And you know what? Obviously I couldn't drive them both, but I would bet that five liter Mustang in stock trim would kick the crap out of that Hypo 289. That's just the way I feel. And lucky for you guys, I'm actually gonna overlay those two power curves. Now the Hypo 289 obviously was rated at a much higher power output, you know, 271 gross horsepower versus 225 net horsepower. And we're gonna take a look at the power, at the differences in the power curves. We're also gonna compare the Hypo 289 to its Shelby version because while I had it on the dyno, I ran it in both trims. But you guys let me know. I'll show you what the power curves are and I'll tell you, it's just not that impressive. Now I know back in the day, all those Mustangs were fairly lightweight, especially a Shelby. And next to a Boss 351 body style, that Shinoda body, that 65 and 66 Fastback Mustang, especially a Shelby, my next favorite. But that's not enough to make me like that little 289. Tell me what you think. Let's get to our test. So what is the most powerful and simultaneously my favorite muscle car small block? at least in terms of Ford, <laughs> is the Boss 351. And it was produced in 1971. That's right, before, after most people went away from the high compression, Ford retained it in 1971 and still had 11 to 1 compression in the Boss 351. Not only that, they had Cleveland 4V heads on this thing, which as we saw in our uh, Boss 302 video, those heads flow a lot. They can make a lot of power. And and in my opinion, if anything, they're even more at home on the 351 displacement than they were on the Boss 302. Takes nothing away from the Boss 302. Obviously, awesome motor, and it's kind of a toss-up for me between the Boss 302 and the Boss 351, only because I like the body style of the Boss 351 Mustang so much, far and away my favorite body style. Now, the Boss 351 Mustang was a radical departure. A lot of guys love it, a lot of guys hate it. But that's actually the, one of the reasons why I like the Boss 351 so much is because it's the underdog. Guys don't like that as much as they like the Boss 302, that Shinoda body style Mustang. It is awesome, but guys don't seem to like the 71 as much. But that's why I like it, because it's an underdog. And when you talk about Boss motors, everyone talks about the Boss 302 or then the Boss 429 big block. Not very many guys talk about the Boss 351, but guess what? 
they should be because it's an awesome motor. And not only that, it's the most powerful factory small block I've ever tested, and I tested a ton of them. So on this application, we put together the Boss 351. I put, a, put together a replica. Obviously, I don't have the budget to afford <laughs> to do a numbers matching motor, especially when you consider, and we'll talk about this in a minute, the induction system. A, a An original auto light carburetor for this Boss 351 might be a four or $5,000 carburetor just for the carburetor. That's why I didn't have the budget <laughs> to put one of those on there. And I used the same 750 Holly that I used on everything else. Now, on this application, the 750 Holly was fine and worked well. And the Auto Light was not, would not be undersized and probably restrict power at all on this. But the other thing I did that I had to change was the intake manifold. I want you guys to let me know what you think in the comments. I ran a cast iron intake manifold. Now, I'm told by lots of guys that the cast iron intake and the, and the aluminum intake are identical. Internally, the passengers are the same. I don't know if that's true or not because I've never had. That was another thing I had a hard time finding is a factory original Boss 302 351 intake. Again, another unicorn like that Autolite carburetor, very expensive and hard to find. And I couldn't find one that I needed so that I could borrow it for the test, which I borrowed a lot of parts for this because, you know, let's face it. There's no budget to build this kind of motor. But I built this Boss 351 replica. It had the right camshaft in it. It had a reproduction of the factory Boss 351 cam. It had the right 4V cylinder heads. It had 11 to 1 compression. It basically had everything it needed. We ran it with long tube headers just like we did with the Boss 302. It just had the cast iron 4V intake and that Holley carburetor. But equipped as such, much, much in the way that we ran the Boss 302 and the other small block Chevys, this thing produced 383 horsepower and also impressive 391 foot-pounds of torque and that's a lot of power especially if we compare it to other things that were happening during that year and, and i'm going to compare right now to a 1970 small block chevy an lt1 350 again close to being my favorite small block chevy because my first car when i was growing up when i was 16 was a 1970 and a half split bumper rally sport camaro now it was not a z28 which would have had the lt1 in it but it was a split bumper, it was a 70 and a half, so I kind of have a soft spot for that LT1. I wish I had one. So if we take a look at a comparison between that 1970 high compression LT1 and this Boss 351, you see that the Boss 351 actually made every bit as much torque as that LT1, but just made a lot more power out on the big end. Now you can thank the uh, high flowing <laughs> 4V Cleveland heads for that because those heads flow you know, 50 or 60 CFM more than the LT1 heads. So they both had high compression. They both had good camshafts. They both had, you know, good induction systems. So I think you can point to the 351, the Boss 351, able to use all of the head flow, or at least a good part of the head flow, from those amazing 4V Cleveland heads. So now that we've taken a look at maybe my favorite Ford, <laughs> Ford small block, muscle car small block, let's take a look what's probably my least favorite. Now we can take a look at what is maybe my least favorite of all of these muscle car small blocks that I ran. And this was actually a Hypo 289. And you guys can tell me if you think I'm wrong about this, but I actually had a 1965 Mustang GT. You know, it was the right kind of car. It was a four-speed, four-series gears. It was a Hypo 289. It even had the Shelby upgrades on it. It had the aluminum intake and Holley and Tri-Y headers. So it was done upright. Um, but I can tell you that... <laughs> it, sure, it sure didn't feel very fast. And I know I also had my then new uh, 1988 5 liter LX Mustang. And that 5 liter LX Mustang would definitely beat the Shelby or definitely beat that Hypo 289. So guys, tell me if you think that that's the case. And I'll, I'll show you a power curve difference here. But when I ran this uh, reproduction of the Hypo 289, you know, it managed to produce just over 280 horsepower, 281 horsepower and a little, a little over 300 foot-pounds of torque. And when I compare this to the other muscle car small, small blocks of the air, especially like the Boss 302 and the Boss 351 on the Ford side, it's just not, you know, it's just not terribly impressive. And I know if we compare it to, you know, a 5-liter 302 rated at 225 horsepower, this looks like a lot more. But if we actually compare it to a 5-liter motor the way that we run it on the engine dyno, the way that we run this, we can see that there's a big difference. Um, obviously, out at the top, the Hypo 289, it's got a lot more camshaft. It wants to rev higher. It's got that um, carbureted intake. 
And uh, and then on this Hypo 289, I think it's worth noting I ran a Holly carburetor on it, not the Autolite, because we didn't have access to the factory Autolite carburetor. But if we compare this to a, uh, you know, 1989, 90, 91, 5-liter Mustang engine, a stock one with a long runner intake, and this one was run with headers on it, but that one only managed to produce under 260 horsepower, 258 horsepower. But here's what really makes it feel good. Um, is the difference in torque down in the 3,000 to 3,500 RPM range? I mean, we're talking of, we're talking about a difference of you know 30 or 40 foot-pounds of torque. It's quite a bit, so it feels a lot better. Um, and obviously, you're early shifting on the on a five-liter. It just felt like it was a lot faster. I never obviously could drive both of them to drag race them, but that factory five-liter sure felt like it was a lot better. Um, but in addition to running the Hypo 289. We also ran it in uh, Shelby guys, so we put the aluminum intake. I didn't have a 715 Holly, so we ran a 750 Holly on it, and we used the Triwise Shelby headers on this 289. And here's what happened, and it did indeed. Like I, you know, those the guys at Shelby knew how to make power. Obviously, they <laughs> won a lot of um, road race champions and stuff with with their combination, so they knew how to build power even back then. So that combination pushed the Hypo 289 over 300 horsepower. Shelby rated it at 306. We didn't quite make that much. We made 302. And torque was up to, through most of the curve, 310 foot-pounds of torque. So that was being a little bit more respectable. Now I hear a lot of comments from guys, and I want you guys to make the comments, about guys revving these things out to, you know, you can pick your number. Guys are saying 8, 9, 10, even 10,000 RPM, which... You know, maybe <laughs> maybe guys really did back in the day. But my concern for these wouldn't be the fact that you could put a roller cam in and enough spring and valve train stuff in it. It's just that these cylinder heads only flow, you know, 160 or 170 CFM. And I just can't see them making power out at that RPM range. Now, maybe if you put a really big set of ported heads, I mean, a 289 is small by displacement comparisons, you know, compared to the 302 and the 351 that, and 327 that the other guys were using. But it also didn't have much head flow. So if you put a airflow research or a trick flow head on this, it would be a lot better. But it would still only be 289 cubic inches. So it always had a deficit. The one thing it did have going for it is if you put this motor in a 65 or 66 fastback Mustang, which is awesome. They were pretty lightweight, so that, that helped them, obviously, with the power-to-weight ratio. But let me know what you guys think. 289, not, not a big fan. Like the Boss 302 and the Boss 351 much better. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what would you think about our test? Is the Boss 351 really the most powerful factory muscle car small block ever produced? If it's not, what do you guys think it is? For me, it's awesome. Lots of head flow, enough displacement compared to the 302. It has enough camshaft, it has enough compression. Of course, I can't afford the five or $10,000 Autolite carburetor and unicorn aluminum intake manifold, but that's beside the point. Guys that have Boss 351s already have that stuff, and obviously they work well. What about the Hypo 289? <laughs> Did I not give it a fair shake? Should I really like that? Should I take another look at it? Here's my problem. I kind of choose these based on the power potential. And a Boss 302, or in this case, a 351, has a cylinder head that flows a ton. A Hypo 289 has a cylinder head that flows almost nothing. I mean, a Boss head outflows that Hypo 289 head by probably 100 CFM per cylinder. Per cylinder, <laughs> that's a lot. So while the Boss is just scratching the surface of the potential of that head, the Hypo 289 is using almost all of that head. And maybe that's why I don't like it, because it doesn't have a ton of potential. But let me know if I'm wrong. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Let me know. I'll keep testing.